In Detroit, the nexus between decades of population loss and the foreclosure crisis have created a pivotal moment in which the city of Detroit must reinvent itself. The city's partnering with community leaders to bring together thousands of residents to help make the tough choices that will determine the city's future. When the foreclosure crisis hit Detroit, people were being evicted from their homes. Our vacancy rate was skyrocketing, and we really did not have a mechanism to deal with the population that was leaving the city of Detroit. It's a challenge that the city has been facing over the last 50 years. The city was built for two million, and we lost almost a million people. So something has to be done about it, and that's really what the Detroit Works Project will address. Welcome to the Detroit Works Project community meeting. The Detroit Works Project will lay out the blueprint for the future of our city. We know that the biggest and most impactful changes result from listening and working with residents. It almost took this much of an economic and housing crisis to kind of jolt people into saying, you know, we really need to come up with bolder, more creative ideas. We kicked off in September of 2010 with community forums, had feedback from almost 5,000 residents. What is the most damaging impact of population loss in your neighborhood? What is your neighborhood's most important asset? It's going to give us a guide in terms of how we allocate resources, how we do zoning for particular parts of the city, and the civic engagement component is crucial to the success of the plan. 44% of you responded that sense of community is your neighborhood's most important asset. Every citizen, every stakeholder, our suburban um, counterparts, everybody has a voice in the future of the city of Detroit. We know we're going to have to have some tough conversations with our community. Being able to explain the level of service a citizen um, or stakeholder can expect in a certain neighborhood. Lighting and trash removal and snow plowing and road resurfacing. We're going to be making very strategic decisions of where we put our resources. We're not going to say that, you know, one neighborhood's going to get um, benefit at the cost of others, but we know we don't have enough resources to go around. Brightmoor is a very impoverished, very thinly populated, very blighted neighborhood in Detroit. The vacancy rate is probably 70%. In Detroit, obviously, we got a lot of blight, and I was looking at different ways to deal with the blight. The struggle that a butterfly goes through so it can fly, for me, is symbolic for Detroit what it's going through. Probably the tougher conversations will be to go to a community like Brightmoor and say the city will not be aligning its resources for your redevelopment strategy on single family homes. But if there's urban agriculture or some kind of community garden, we perhaps can support those kinds of efforts. We just have to be very, very strategic with our limited resources. We think it's very important that we do some interventions depending on the type of neighborhood. Grandmont Rosedale is a significant neighborhood in the city of Detroit. Um, that great quality housing stock, a traditionally strong um, neighborhood with a strong tax base. City government and the mayor are recognizing the importance of neighborhoods like ours, and the importance of preserving neighborhoods like ours. Good evening, everybody. I'm the executive director of the Grandmont Rosedale Development Corporation. Obviously, we all know that over the last couple of years, we've seen a dramatic increase in the number of foreclosed properties and the number of uh, vacant houses. Now, GRDC has been purchasing and renovating houses for over 20 years, but we've never had to face the scale of the problem that we're facing today. People are really concerned about the number of vacant houses in our community right now. We went from having just a couple houses in the whole neighborhood that might be what you'd consider troubled houses to vacant houses on every block. So what's the story on this house now? Well, we bought this house uh, a couple months ago. It's a vacant property. It was uh, mortgage foreclosed. Okay. Uh, 
The key part of this is making sure that we're aligned with our philanthropic communities because when we start to put our dollars behind each other, then it has such a greater impact. Why Grand Mount Rosedale is really important to us is that it, we think it's a tipping point neighborhood. It's a neighborhood that if the right resources and the right uh, public and private dollars are leveraged, this neighborhood could actually become the neighborhood it was at one time, which was a very vibrant neighborhood. Hello. It's really volunteers and the community people who drive what we do. And there are people now who are rising to the challenge that we face, bigger challenges than we've ever faced before. Detroit is not just what you see in the news. There are real communities here where people have strong ties and they work together. Detroiters are very passionate. Detroiters could have left, but love the city and chose to stay. It's a community that understands that status quo is no longer acceptable. And perhaps no other American city has had to transform on so many levels. But what has been heartening about Detroit in this moment is that I think everyone has had a wake-up call. We cannot continue to allow the population to decrease. and We have to do things differently as an administration and as a city. This is Detroit's defining moment. Thank you.